Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 34 of the chapter Hydrocarbons. We have been studying about alkynes. In this video, I'll tell you about the preparation and physical properties of alkynes. There are two methods of preparation that have been mentioned in your book for alkynes. The first is from calcium carbide and the second is from vicinal dihalides. Let us come to the first method of preparation, that is how do we prepare alkynes from calcium carbide. Ethyne is prepared from calcium carbide. When calcium carbide is made to react with water, it gives you ethyne. And it also gives you calcium hydroxide. But this calcium carbide is prepared by reacting quicklime with carbon or coke. When quicklime and coke are made to react together, it gives you calcium carbide and carbon monoxide and it is this calcium carbide which is used to make and made, made to react with water to give you ethyme. And this quicklime is obtained from limestone by heating limestone. So when you heat limestone, that is calcium carbonate, a decomposition reaction takes place. You get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. This calcium oxide, which is called quicklime, is made to react with coke and it is heated with coke and it gives you calcium carbide. The calcium carbide then is made to react with water and ultimately gives you the ethyne, the compound ethyne, which is an alkyne. So this is the method by which ethyne is prepared industrially. In industry, so we say industrially, cal carbon uh, sorry, ethyne is prepared by treating calcium carbide with water. This calcium carbide is prepared by heating quicklime with coke. And quicklime, this quicklime is obtained by heating limestone by the decomposition of limestone, thermal decomposition of limestone. So this was the first method of preparation of an alkyne. The second method of preparation is from vicinal dihalides. Vicinal, I always repeat whenever the word comes, vicinity means neighborhood. When two carbons have halogen atoms attached to them in the chain, they are called vicinal dihalides. Vicinal, neighboring, dihalides means that there are two halogens. So, when you have a vicinal dihalide and you make it react with alcoholic potassium hydroxide, it results in the formation of an alkenyl halide. As I explain the reaction to you, you'll understand why it is alkenyl, K-E-N-Y-L, which means that ene is one which has a double bond. So it is an alkene which has been substituted by a halogen. So it is alkenyl halide. And when this is made, the alkenyl halide is made to react with sodamide, it gives you uh, the alkyne. So let us just read this and then I'll explain the equation to you. Vicinal dihalides with alcoholic potassium hydroxide undergo dehydrohalogenation. Hydrogen and halogen are removed. So this reaction is also an example of a dehydrohalogenation reaction. So one molecule of hydrogen and halogen, dehydrohalogen. So one molecule of hydrogen and the halogen or HX uh, is removed from the alkenyl uh, halide and which on treatment with sodamide will give the alkyne. An alkenyl halide is formed and this alkenyl halide also results in the removal of a hydrogen and the halogen giving you the alkyne. So take a look at this. This is an alkane, a dibromoethane. So 1,2-dibromoethane. 1,2-dibromo, why is it a vicinal dihalide? Because two carbons which are neighboring, both of them have got two halogens. So it is a dihalide, dibromo, and 1,2-dibromoethane is the compound that you start with. Make it react with potassium hydroxide. When you make it react with potassium, alcoholic potassium hydroxide, what happens? Potassium hydroxide, when it is alcoholic although, it results in the formation of K positive and OH negative. The potassium, which is positive, will combine with the more electronegative bromine, result in the formation of KBr, potassium bromide. And the OH part combines with, if let us say, from this hydrogen, the bromine has been removed to form KBr, 
from the other carbon, one of the hydrogens will be removed to give you H2O. The OH part, it will add, the hydrogen removed will add to the OH part and result in the formation of H2O, that is water. This, when you remove one bromine and one hydrogen, naturally the two electrons, this bond breaks, this bond breaks, both the carbons get back their electron. Hydrogen takes its electron and goes and forms water. Bromine takes its electron and it forms KBr. And these two electrons now result, the, the both the carbons, the electrons they get, they result in the formation of a double bond. So you get an alkenyl halide, right? So the double bond is formed and now you get the alkenyl halide. In the next step, we make this alkenyl halide react with sodium ion, which is Na positive, NH2 negative. Again, the positive part, Na positive, is going to react with the bromine and you get sodium bromide. And the NH2 negative part is going to combine with the hydrogen on this side now and result in the formation of NH3. NH2 turns into NH3 and the same thing happens. Bromine takes its electron and goes away. So carbon gets one electron and this carbon, one hydrogen from this carbon moves away to form ammonia. And therefore that electron which is remaining, both the carbons get one electron each from the leaving groups that is bromine and hydrogen and now they share that pair of electrons to result in the formation of a triple bond between two carbon atoms. As soon as a triple bond is formed between the two carbon atoms, it is now an alkyne. So an alkyne is produced or an alkyne is prepared. So these were the two methods of preparation of alkynes. You can prepare alkynes from calcium carbon, carbide, you can prepare them from vicinal dihalides by dehydrohalogenation. In both these reactions, in both the steps, do you realize that hydrogen and halogen are removed? So it is called dehydrohalogenation. In this step also, the halogen was removed from here and the hydrogen atom was removed from the other carbon. So this was also this step was also a dehydrohalogenation reaction. Now we come to the physical properties of alkynes. We have studied the physical properties of alkanes and alkenes. If you really look at the physical states and the physical properties, alkynes are pretty much similar to alkanes and alkenes. The only difference between alkanes and alkenes and alkynes is the presence of a double bond in the case of alkenes between two carbon atoms and the presence of a triple bond in the case of alkynes between two carbon atoms. Otherwise, they are all the same. So, due to the presence of multiple bonds in alkenes and alkynes, the number of hydrogens may differ and therefore their general formula differ. But basically, they are all made up of carbon and hydrogen. All three categories are made up of carbon and hydrogen. And the electronegativity differences between carbon and hydrogen are also the same. So, they are pretty much, the physical properties are pretty much similar. But the presence of the double and triple bond may impart a little bit of difference in their properties. So let us just study what the physical properties are. They are, the physical properties are similar to alkanes and alkynes, not exactly the same, but they are similar. In this, the first three members are gases, that is ethyne, propyne and butyne are gases. The next eight members, that is from C5, H8 to C12, H22, the next eight members are liquids. And any molecule higher than C12, H22, that is C13 onwards, would be, uh, would be solids. You can understand this very easily, that the smaller the molecule, the, the uh, more diluter is the physical state. That is, if the molecules are really small from C2 to C4, they would be in the gaseous state. But as the mass increases, mass of the molecule increases, the physical state becomes more and more dense. So from C5 to C12, you have liquids and C13 onwards, you have solids. The heavier the molecule is, the more condensed is the physical state. All alkynes are colorless. All alkynes are odorless except for ethyne. Ethyne or ethylene is the common name. Ethylene has a characteristic odor, but all other alkynes are odorless. All alkynes are colorless. Alkynes are weakly polar in nature. You know, alkanes are non-polar because carbon and hydrogen, which are combining together, there, there is not much of an electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen. And due to which they are and Another thing is that every carbon is tetravalent and every carbon is forming four single bonds. 
Therefore, the distribution of charges is such that the molecule is absolutely non-polar. But when you come to alkene, alkene is also predominantly non-polar. A little bit of polarity will be introduced, but it will not be so pronounced that you can even notice it. But in the case of alkynes, you do notice a mild polarity. So we said they are weakly polar in nature. Why are, what, what is the reason for this polarity? You know, I just now told you that there would have been some polarity in the case of alkenes also, but it is not so much that it is visible. So they also appear to be mainly non-polar. In alkynes, there is a triple bond between two carbon atoms. You know this already. If you imagine the chains to be longer, then a carbon atom which has a single bond, which has all single bonds, is sp3 hybridized. And a carbon atom which has a triple bond is sp hybridized. There is a difference between the two carbons. The bond length, the bond strength, everything is different. Due to which, if a carbon is sp hybridized and a carbon is sp3 hybridized, there will be a difference in the electronegativities of the two carbons. Because this carbon, sp3, is going to keep the electrons, the other atoms, away from it. But an sp hybridized carbon is going to keep the atoms closer to it. Right? So, because the bond distance, the bond length is shorter, that causes an electronegativity difference between different carbon atoms. And this little electronegativity difference that is created between the carbon atoms is responsible for the weakly polar nature of alkynes. Then, we know that they are organic molecules just like oils. Whenever you think of organic chemistry, you have to think of substances which are uh, non-polar like oils. So what happens with oil? Oil floats on water. Similarly, alkynes are weakly polar in nature. They are weakly polar, but they are basically uh, non-polar, predominantly non-polar, weakly polar. So they are lighter than water. Our landscapers have come, so they are, they are really noisy. So they are lighter than water and they are immiscible uh, in water. Why are they immiscible in water? Because they are basically non-polar. That weakly polar nature is only because of the difference between the carbon atoms. So they are insoluble in water, but anything which is non-polar in nature will be insoluble in a polar solvent like water, but it will be soluble in a non-polar solvent. So organic solvents are non-polar. Therefore, it will be soluble. All alkynes would be soluble in organic solvents. For example, ethers, carbon tetrachloride, and benzene are examples of non-polar solvents. Their melting point, boiling point, and density increase with increase in molar mass. This is similar to the physical state. The larger the molecule, the more dense it will be. The larger the molecule, the higher will be its boiling point, the higher, higher will be its melting point. So melting point, boiling point, and density they increase with increase in molar mass. And the lesser the molar mass, the lesser the density, the lesser the melting point, boiling point. So this is pretty understandable why the physical properties are such. It is because of the mass or the size of the molecule. These properties depend on that, not on the chemical nature of the molecule. So, and that's the reason why the physical properties of alkanes, alkenes and alkynes are similar because Chemically, they are pretty, um, they consist of the same kind of atoms. So they almost have the same kind of electronegativities and um, masses of carbon and hydrogen are similar. So their properties, physical properties depend on that and not on the actual chemical nature. So these were the physical properties and the methods of preparation of alkynes. With this, I wind up this video. If you wish to watch the other videos of this chapter, please click the link that appears on the top of your um, video. And um, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.